This is Mason from 3 Pete back with a big announcement. I spent the last six months learning Unreal Engine and how to animate in Unreal, and you've seen some of that in the tutorials and animations I've been releasing. If you haven't seen my animation tutorials on this channel, definitely check them out. I'll leave a link in the description to my step-by-step -step parkour roll vault and precision jump tutorials to get you started. Also, if you haven't heard about my free weekly AAA animation giveaway, click the link in the description and go check out all those animations and put them to good use in your projects. Okay, back to it. I spent the last several months building tools to make animation in Unreal much easier, and I'm excited to announce the release of Tattools, my 3 p animation tools plugin for Unreal, absolutely free. These tools work with any control rig that shares control naming with the MetaHuman and UE5 mannequin rigs, and hopefully will make your animation workflow much faster. In this video, I'll explain what Tattools does and walk you step by step through installation and all the features, but first, I'll give you the elevator pitch. Tattools has curve editor filters and advanced control picker that makes it easy to select and group controls, has selection sets like Anonbot, makes it easy to copy, paste, and mirror poses across characters or other level sequences, and just generally level up your Unreal animation workflow with a powerful tool that makes animating faster and easier. Let me know in the comments any other features you'd like to see after watching the rest of this video, of course. The picker side of Tattools was originally based on the MetaHuman picker, which carries an Unreal-only content license. But this really only makes sense to use inside Unreal anyway, so that's not limiting at all. My modifications are all released under the BSD3 clause license, and the details on all of that are in the license file in the GitHub repository. So yes, I'm releasing a significant amount of work completely free, and all I ask in return is that you like and share this video, subscribe to my channel, and if you do want to support future development of these tools, I have a buy me a coffee link in the description. My real motive here though is to level up Unreal Animation and help create a large community of game developers and animators on this channel and in the Discord so we can all help each other build amazing creations, whether that be games, movies, or this. Whatever this is. Before I get started, I really want to shout out two people who were instrumental in helping me create the picker side of this asset. Locodrome, who originally sent me his picker, where a bunch of the functions came from, and really inspired me to build out this picker in the first place. As well as Askadev, who I don't know, but whose MetaHuman picker modification tutorials were a truly fantastic way for me to learn utility widget creation and the MetaHuman picker modification. Links to both of their YouTube channels in the description, and don't forget about Locodrome's MetaHuman Face Picker, which sets the standard for facial animation editing in Unreal. Okay, 3 p Anim Tools, or Tattools 1.0, let's get into it. First, we need a project where we want to install the picker. I'm going to use the game animation sample, so I open up my Epic Games Launcher, go to Samples, select Game Animation Sample, and then click Create Project. I put it where I want to put it, and then we wait for it to load. Once it's installed, I go back to my library, I find that project, but before I open it, I right click and I show in folder so I can install our plugin. However you wanna do this, you can just create a directory here, plugins, so it should be alongside your content folder at that level. And then here, I'm gonna use Git. There's a couple different ways we can do this. I'll show you the Git bash approach. Hit enter. And I'm done. That produces a 3 peat Anim Tools, which is the full plugin, everything you need to know. And so let's go ahead and start up the project. You can come back here and double click, or you can just double click your U project. While this is starting, I prefer to use the git clone approach because then whenever the I want to pull down an update to this, I can just go into this directory and git bash and do a git pull, and it's going to update my plugin for me. Okay. So now we have the plugin and you can confirm that just go, you can either go to edit plugins or you can control spacebar to open up your content browser. And if the plugin doesn't show up down here, come over to the gear settings and go down and make sure you have show plugin content checked. And so now we can go to the picker, which is 3 p Anim Tools content picker. And right here, we can just right click and say run editor utility widget. It's ready to go. So we'll go ahead and dock this. I'm going to put it next to details. Bring it out a little bit. There we go. Let's go find a sequence to open. So if we come here, we can just go find an animation. If we go to characters, UAFN manne mannequin animations, I'll do traversal. And actually, we'll just search for hurdle. And come down. These are all the animation montages. We're looking for something that starts with M. And I'm just going to pick one at random. We'll open that up. Perfect. So we'll go to edit and sequencer. And what we're going to notice, if you go to bake to control rig and nothing is there, what you need to do 
is go to your content browser, go to characters, UE5 mannequins, meshes, select SK mannequin, your skeleton, go into the retarget manager, which is right here. Go to manage compatible skeletons, hit add, type in UEFN. And this tells Unreal that the UEFN mannequin is compatible with the UE5 Manny, which means the control rig for the UE5 Manny will now work with the UEFN mannequin. Save that. Let's go back here, edit and sequencer, bake to control rig. And sure enough, now we have our control rig. And as usual, the bake to control rig goes behind the other windows. So I got to bring it back. Now that that's baked, we can close this. We won't need it anymore. And we have, and now we have a sequence open, so as you can see. All right. So now let's get acclimated with this thing. So there's a couple things you need to know right away. If this checkbox, which is defaults to true, is auto select first, if that's on, then whenever you start interacting with the picker, it's going to pick the first actor here. You'll notice none are loaded. So if I hit select rig, that's going to automatically hit this refresh it's going to find any all the actors in the scene and pick the first one if this isn't checked these boxes will do nothing so i just hit auto select first and that actually went and picked him but you don't need to do any of that you can just go start working like you can just pick a pick a control and get to it now you notice i moved i have these anim details in the way they so i'm going to dock them somewhere else because i don't use them very much and also they don't uh, take up a lot of space. So I'll go down here, we'll use this. So now I can start working. So I'll pick the spine controls right here. You can pick anything in the rig. So as you select these, these are all your base controls on the rig. And you notice the, the light colored ones on the outside. There's your pole vectors for your knees and your elbows when you're in IK. And so if I wanna select multiple controls, I can hold shift and just add the controls as I like it. If I didn't want to get, say, the middle one, spine two, I can just control click and that'll remove that selection. First, I'm going to take you on a general tour around the entire picker. So you've got the um, control selections and there's a couple uh, convenience controls. Uh, so at the top, you've got, you know, select everything in the body, which gets everything but the arms and legs. So then if you hold shift and then click the arm ones, now you've got the body and the arms. And then if you come down here and click the leg one, now you got body, arms, and legs, including the global control, the body offset, and the root. Now, just like all the other buttons, you can hold control, click these three, and now you don't have any of those selected. And you can do that in the rig at any time. If this was a, a setup, so this is a common thing that you might want to do is select all of the controls so that you can copy the pose without pulling the global thing. So. Because it's so common, we've got this button right here that's called body, which will select the exact same thing, but it will also go grab roll. It'll go grab all of the uh, like foot roll and the other controls that are available inside the rig. So you've got that. If you do want the world space positioned controls like global body offset and root, just hit all and you'll get those two. And if you have multiple controls selected, so I'll hold shift, I'll go grab the spine or actually here. If you have multiple controls selected, I'll go grab the right arm and you hit mirror, it'll go select the left arm. So it'll mirror the control selection. All right. So if you're just getting started and you don't want to use all of the extra features of this uh, picker, you can turn off the show all and it'll give you a nice, clean, simplified interface. On that simplified interface, you've just got all of your picker controls. So you have, you know, you can select all the controls in the rig. So now, for example, I have all the spine controls selected at the same time. And then you've got your finger controls. So obviously it'll select everything in the rig or you can select the entire hand, which is very useful if you're trying to save poses or load poses. And then down here, you've got your level sequence favorites. So for example, we're currently working on this climb. Um, if we control click, that'll save off the climb. And then let's go find another. I think my other one was a hurdle. Yep, here we go. So now we have a different, so this is a hurdle. Here, I'll show you from the game animation sample. So let's control click to set that one. So now if I wanna move quickly between them, I can click here and I've got my climb. And then when I click here, 
I'm on my hurdles. If you're trying to copy poses or animations from one to the other, or just pose match, or just get a general idea of what's going on, that's a really easy way to move back and forth between two different level sequences. And in the picker itself, so on the in the body controls and everything that's going on here, you have your base level controls in orange and red. So that's, you know, you can select every control in the rig. And these are typically going to be your standard always on controls or your FK controls. The darker orange controls on the outside will be your IK controls. So for example, the legs are in IK right now. And so I can click here and I'm going to get the pole vector for that knee, or I can grab the foot control. Always I can grab foot control or the ball IK control. Additionally, I can switch between IK and FK. So let's just go find this is the right leg. So if I go select the right leg, no IK, IK. And that's it for the simplified interface. If you add more actors to the scene, you can always hit refresh and you should see them both. I've loaded up a different project that has a multi-actor scene in it already, so we can talk a couple things. But in this simplified interface, if you have multiple hackers in the scene, you can go pick them. And now you'll have everything that you need to work with. So let's move on to the advanced interface. In the advanced interface, you've got four more sections that appear. You've got the pose section, which I'm going to talk about in a moment. You have filtering, which allows you to very quickly get to uh, sequencer curve filters. I'll show you, generally speaking, when you come down here, right click and filter. These, I've added a couple, align to first, last key, make hold, and you obviously have the Euler filter right there. That's built into Unreal. And I have very quick one click access so that if you have stuff selected in the curve editor, you can just very quickly, you know, control A, you can just very quickly select Euler and you're there. I'll show you how these work in a moment. Then you can key select it and keyhole rig. So whatever obviously that works exactly as it sounds key selected if you have a bunch of controls selected and you want to key them force a key on the current frame wherever your playhead is you click this button if you want to key the entire rig which is very common if you're going to switch from fk to ik you can key the whole rig and it will put a key on every single control over on the selection set side i have select rig because it is the easiest way to get every single control every single key in the animation available to you right there and so that selects the entire rig that you're dealing with. So if I do it for the victim, you'll see you have the different character right there. And then you have selection sets. So we'll talk quickly about selection set. For example, if I want all three spine controls and I want to save them off, I'll go ahead and make number zero spine. I hit control or I hold control and I click the zero. Now this selects all the spine controls. If I hold shift when I click it, I can change the name. So we'll call this spine. Now, when I select this, I've got spine controls. So if I go to local space rotation, and I can rotate all controls at once. This is also useful. For example, if you want to go grab clavicles, I can click that and then shift click this. And now I've got both clavicles selected and I can control click here, shift click and change it to clav. The, and why this is valuable is a lot of times you want to we'll go to local. And if I rotate, I can now change them both at the same time. You can do this with shoulders, you can do this with elbows, you can do it with pretty much anything if you want to change things in unison. Now on to pose copying. So I've got this, this person ready to go. If I select all the body controls, the first thing I can do is I can just come over here and copy that pose. I can also mirror it very quickly. I'll put him back where he was. But if I want this guy to start in the same pose that this guy was in, but mirrored, I can now go over to my attacker, select the body control, paste the pose. And there we go. And if I want him to be left foot forward, I can make him left foot forward. And now I have a completely mirrored pose, which I can also do via going over here selecting a different animation and say i want him to start in this more benign situation i go select the body controls copy that come back over to my other level sequence first things first i've got to select the body in the other one and then paste that in and sure enough there i go i've got everything i need now on to the filtering section if i have an animation that has some large rotations i'll go ahead and create some large rotations here. Um, so we'll just use the upper arm FK control. We'll open up the 
sequence of curves dot here so we have a little bit of room. So okay, we're gonna pick, so we're in local, we'll pick yaw. So right now yaw is pretty constrained, but one thing I can do to kind of show off what this is, is I can just grab a section and I can minus equals 360. You'll notice he doesn't actually change but when you're actually playing, because you're playing a different frame rate, so this is at 30 frames per second, which you can see if you go to the sequencer, 30 frames per second. So your game is going to be running, your project, whatever it is, might be running at 100, which means every other, it's going to create two frames in between, and it's going to use this interpretation ter, interpolation to decide how to do that, which means your character might, and I'll just go ahead and delete some of these keys so you see what happens when it, when it goes on. And because of that, even though there is no difference between these angles, there's actually a 360 degree difference. And so when we come back over here and play it again, you'll see, you see how he's, his arm just spun around like that. So instead, if we control A and come click Euler, that will fix, fix that issue completely. So it brings everything back. Anything that does a 360 degree push, it's going to bring it home and solve those interpolation issues that you might be seeing. So if you have that flickering in there. So now let's talk about align to first, align to last. Let's say, we'll go ahead and just move this off again. I don't know why I picked 360. I'll go ahead and slide them up a little bit. But so I have this discontinuity here and I'd like to go fix that. So I can go select all the keys that are not continuous, move in here, add this last key, and then come over and say align to last, and that'll line it right up. If I hit control Z, this is all works with the transactions and I want to align it to the first instead. So let's align this guy to the first. We'll get rid of this last key just to show you how this works. You hit align to first, you got the same thing. So that's a very quick way if you change, especially if you followed my uh, rifle to longsword tutorial, you know I spent a lot of time shifting curves after I changed my initial pose. This makes that significantly easier because you can just, if you change the first frame or the last frame in the animation, well, and I'll just show you what that looks like. If I change the first frame of the animation to be something entirely different across the entire rig, you can just shift the entire thing. So if I change this and I wanted him to be more arm forward for some reason, no, I, no idea why that would be. Um, I would come over here. I would change it like this. I can now go select and I can pick everything in its entirety, select a line to first. And you notice it just shifted him. Any ones that need to be shifted will, will shift accurate to their first key. Or if, if you change the last frame, you could do it with a line to last. So it's a very quick way across the entire rig or a bunch of controls at the same time. However, whatever makes sense for what you've done to the animation, you can just go in and get them all to line up very quickly. Like for example, I have discontinuities here on multiple with this last key right here. You notice they all shift up. So I can just say align to last and that's gonna hit everything up all at once. And it makes much faster if you're doing pose editing to get, uh, to get alignment when it's a simple shift that you've caused. That's it. Three Pete Anim Tools or Tattools. Drop a comment if there's anything you'd like to see. Thanks for watching and see you next time.